technicals and very good. But I'm going to show you the method in my madness here. This is for beginners who want to become super shredders. Now, I don't actually want to become a super shredder, but I want to share my breakthroughs with you in what I do believe you're going to have to go through to become a super shredder. Because I know a lot of you out there have that uh, latent desire to become one, even if it's just in the privacy of your own bedroom. We've all been there. Let me show you the building blocks. Firstly, you're going to have to build up strength, especially in your freaking hand. Coordination between your two hands, but I assume that you've got that. You're going to have to build up strength. You're going to have to get this hand fanned out and stretched. Because you note the intervals, and note my fingering. I'm playing the chords, the notes of the chord F major. F, A, C. But note my fingering. One. Pointer finger. Second finger or middle finger and then funky. F, A, and C. So now you know the notes that make up the triad of a major chord. I'm basing that exercise out of flat fifth intervals from F to B, from B to F, the flat fifth interval, from F to B again, the flat fifth interval, you can hear that devil's note is referred to. To F again, the compensation between the G and the B string, and then back to B, from F to B. But I'm playing the major, the notes of the major chord on each string of those flat fifth intervals on that diagonal on each string. F, A, C. something you're learning the notes of the fretboard in case you missed that you also got that hand to stretch out I'm, I'm getting that stretch between my pointer finger and my middle finger i'm getting it nice and stretched out and i'm getting that funky activated it's going to come in very handy in time when you are a shredder now remember what I do down here, I've purposely chosen F because I'm getting that big stretch because a lot of the shredding you're going to be doing up here it's going to be a lot easier because the distances are a lot shorter. So you're getting your eye and hand coordination trained. You're getting the muscle memory. fretboard and you're getting your brain trained and slowly if you do it often enough you're going to get this ability it's not music but you're getting this physical ability to do these things <laughs> spot my mistakes as I'm still learning. But I know what I'm targeting. Even though I'm not good at it. I only started this this morning. But you can see that I'm, I can you can see that I know when I make a mistake. Because I'm learning the fretboard. Not that long ago I wouldn't have been able to tell you that's an F at random. And that's an A. Okay, let's examine what we're doing. We're playing the root, a flat third, a, a major third, and a flat, and a perfect fifth. Excuse me. F is one, three, major third, and five, the perfect fifth. And I'm then playing it in B. Root, major third, etc. B, E flat, F sharp, 
I wouldn't have been able to tell you that at random if it wasn't for this exercise and other exercises I do. Okay, but I kid you not. Now remember, a lot of the stuff I'm showing you, you're going to be doing up here. With it. You get it right down here, you're going to be a lot, and you, you take the same theory up here above the 12th fret, and you're going to fly, man. Okay, so now, root, major third, perfect fifth. Now, I said, you do know about intervals, I take it. If you don't, check my channel, anything where I mention where I'm sitting in a horizontal position like this. I'm giving lessons. If I'm standing vertical behind a microphone, I'm howling like a wolf. I'm having fun. There's a lot of jams. I've got over 1,400 videos on my channel. You might enjoy some of them. Sometimes I'm playing with some bandmates of mine that we occasionally get together. Average age of the band is about 63. So we're not youngsters, but we're starting to get to know what we're doing. Okay, we're on the more complex issues here. So you know about intervals, like C major played in, expressed in intervals. In D, E, Ach, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Back to 1. How's that? National numbering system developed in the late 50s in Nashville. Simple, eh? So now I'm playing, uh, I'm playing a triad, as I mentioned, the notes of the major scale. And the, the triad notes of a major scale is one major third perfect fifth. And I'm playing it on one string, which gives us this interesting observation. How many spaces are there between the one and the perfect third? There are three, three blank frets. That gives you a major third interval. One, two, three spaces, major third interval. One, two blanks. You've got the minor third interval. There's two frets blank as such. If you ever get stuck anywhere, just count the distances. Major third in first inversion. Three spaces, minor, minor third two spaces between the fingered notes on one string. With a minor chord, I'm going to play F minor. F, A flat, C, root, minor third. Can you hear that? More depressive, subdued sound, the minor interval. Note the interval distances. Two frets empty, depress. You've got a minor third. One, two, three, Empty spaces depress. F minor and it's all glory. B minor. Skip two. Skip three. Now you can play major and minor chords on one string. Anywhere. As long as you know where you're starting. I'm going to start on D sharp or E flat. One, I want to play. Uh, I want to play E flat minor. One, two. Excuse me. It's C sharp. C sharp minor. One, two. Depress. One, two, three. Depress. So for those of you who want to start sounding like Eddie Van Halen, the late great Eddie Van Halen. Did I? One, two, one, two, three. Clever, eh? I'm starting at C sharp there on the G string. Two, minor third interval. One, two, three. Perfect fifth, fifth interval. In the first inversion, if I played, for example, up here and I start at G, because there's G there on the 15th fret. idea what I'm playing there? So I'm doing 17, 13, 10. How about I give you a clue? I just played you C minor, but I started on a G note. E flat and C. I've played the third inversion 
I've done this before, but for your benefit, if you haven't watched my other videos and you happen to click on this segment of this video, it is so important. G, E flat, C. You are playing C minor. There's C, E flat, G. You write your triads out. And you know that C, E flat, G is C minor. Because you know, because you're just going to memorize it once you've counted it out the way I've explained to you. You know that C, E, G is C major. There's C. C major. You see, as I explained to you down here at C minor, C sharp minor. You're not just following some other guy's video and copying his hands where his hands are. You've now got a mechanism to work it out. I have stressed to you in previous videos that you need to know all on a 22 fret guitar. There are, you can do it like this. There's six strings and half of 22 is 11. Are you following me here? You know that six times 11 is 66. And 66 and 66 is 132. You don't have to be a genius at mathematics here, okay? Does that make sense to you? I've got a 22 fret guitar here and six strings. Well, I can go six times 22 is 132. But what do I say? Why don't I go half of 22 is 11 times six? Okay, so I'm an accountant, so it's easy for me. And I studied statistics as well. So there you go, okay? Um, 11 times six is 66 and then you can say to yourself in the next octave you've got another 66 depressible notes on a guitar you've got 132 depressible notes on a 22 fret guitar remember that it's because when you look at this thing if you see it as a bunch of dots you could argue to me that to know the 132 depressible notes could be impossible to learn but hopefully by now you know it's not because if you want to be a super shredder, you need to know where every note is. But it's simple. Because if that's a G, which you do know, the third fret of the E string, that's a G on the D string at the fifth fret. Skip a string, skip a fret. You've got an octave. You can then go from the D string to the E string. And you've got another G. When you cross from B, G to B string, and you've got another G. Know where these things are. It's simple. There's F sharp. There's F sharp. Two frets because you've gone over the G, over the B string, over G, B. Does that make sense? F sharp. And I've taught you earlier, once you know what your root note is, or your, where you put your pointer finger, you can then just count frets. You don't even have to know the alphabet. I'm making this really simple for you. I've never seen anyone else explain it like this. I hope I get credit for it. But I don't care, because my objective is merely to teach you to become a super shredder. Now, I encourage you to watch the whole length of my long form videos. Because there are some massive gems of, I have a very informal way of presenting, very, um, very amateur. But if you look at my videos, you can and sit with pen and paper, I urge you, because sometimes there are gems. There have been, I've had, I went back eight or nine months ago, and I used to do very short form videos, two, three minutes. And I was horrified at some of the information I was imparting those days already. I had to sit with pen and paper to figure out what I was telling you. <laughs> because I tell you things as I learn them. Because I have so much joy fr from this instrument. So let's, let's try that. So if you ever feel like you're in a bit of a doozy, just put the guitar down, go make yourself a cup of coffee or whatever you do, and come back to it. But stay off the cans because uh, you're not going to be that good. You might think you're good, but if you record yourself, you'll be quite horrified what's coming out of you. 
music comes out your brain, you know, the moment you start tampering with your brains with substances, it's, you're not going to get the right music. <laughs> My muscle memory seems to be kicking in already. This is not, in, not only that exercise, I do other ones. I'm playing a series of uh, zigzag, zigzag, um, in that my starting points are from, from 6 4 2 and then. 5, 3, 1. 4th fret, 4th fret, 5th fret. I'm playing minor 13 twelve. I'm not concentrating because I'm talking. But it's... Um, it's because I'm talking, so I'm not actually concentrating what I'm doing. Echo on Alan Holdsworth, you know, or Alfred Hitchcock movie, you might get a role. <laughs> you might have got a role 55 years ago as the uh, uh, score writer. So, uh, very exciting stuff to me. It's up to you to figure out. You know, just work little things out for yourself, whatever pleases your ear. Um. terrify you but some people love it that scale is one of the most popular amongst young people these days the harmonic minor scale now let me tell you if you don't know scales or you're merely in an a minor scale you're merely adding what is referred to as a raised seven which i find a misnomer i'm depressing the a, a note there on the fifth fret of the e string a Immediately you get that exotic sound. Eh? There's the octave of that note. There's the A. And then you can play the, the flat second, which takes it into Phrygian territory. Territory of Gypsy Scale. Phrygian, Phrygian dominant. It's got a major third interval there. theory behind it you know it's not just random you've got the Hungarian minor you've got the, the gypsy scale you've got uh, Phrygian dominant which has got that major third you know that sound you've got your uh, harmonic minor just play the same thing in two octaves four notes of uh, A harmonic minor in two octaves. Use your imagination. I've played the same thing in four octaves there. You probably have the crowd going crazy when you're 
band is going crazy behind you. So, now we do this one. It's going to need some work, as you can see, and therefore I'm telling you, you've got to put the work into these things. Now, we spoke about the triads earlier. One, two, three, and one flat. on several strings. You've got F, C, and A. That's known as a triad. That's F major. So is this. F, C, F, C, A. Root, Major, major third is A, F minor triad, minor third, A flat. But I've taught you to think in different dimensions as such. You can think on one string for shredding. Now there's our F major here at the 13th fret. F, A, and C. So if I played C, A, F, you know what I've just done. I've played F major but in the third inversion, because I started on the fifth. I've got to think what I just said. If I start on the C, I'm starting in the fifth interval of the F major. So I've played the third inversion. If I started playing A, F, if I started with A, F, C. I have then played A, F, C. I have played the second inversion of F major on one string. You follow? Because the triad of F major is F, A, C. If I start on A, it's the second note in the triad. So I've played A, A, F, C. Sorry about that. A, F, sitting because I don't play guitar like this. I'm, I'm doing this for demonstration purposes. I know there's uh, super virtuosos who play like this, but it's not very comfortable for me. But um, you got my point though. Hopefully you, you, you're taking a few notes here if you don't know the stuff. Because, for example, if I did... I'm playing F... A and D. Now what the hell did I play? Well, go back to counting the spaces. One, two, three. So I've got something like F to an A is a major third interval, but then I've got one, two, three, four, five. Now we're getting into different territory. This is important. That note there is a D, the 22nd fret. That's an A. I'm confusing you now. I'm playing D major. Root 5th. Am I, playing Am I playing D minor? Let's have a look at it. F, D. I play D minor. D minor, but 
Which inversion of D minor? That's the perfect fit. I started with the F, which is the major third, the minor third. So I played the second inversion. I hope that makes sense. Because the minor third is the second interval. Good luck with this stuff. Put your head around it. D minor. Second inversion. <laughs> you follow, no? D, F, A. But I played it F, A, D. D minor, second inversion, because I played the minor third interval first. I went nice and slowly there so that you had time to think about this. I really appreciate this. So, as I told you, there's several factors that um, go into, into this. And one of them is time. And the other one, you could argue, is distance. Now, while we're talking about distance, you want to program your muscle memory and your brain about intervals. So you now know that that is a major third interval from F to A. Practice doing it from F to A and then play the G to the major third interval. But use your pointer finger and your middle finger. You see my hesitation? So that's what you want to fix. Make sure you don't have that problem. Simple enough, eh? Now I'm going to do it in A flat. Major third interval, you skip three frets. Make sure you can do that fast. You see? You following? I'm showing you how, how I'm stumbling. So I'm still working on this. Ridiculous, eh? I need to get rid of those hesitations, and so do you if you've got them. That's a major third interval. Because you want to be able to go. A flat major to B flat major. Now you understand where this is heading. This is a good one. Because I'm making mistakes, therefore it's good. The more mistakes you make, the better you're going to become. Because you only learn from your mistakes. Take a kid's hand and put it in the fire. See if the kid will then voluntarily go put his hand back in the fire. You got to do this, people. Just do those two fingers. And then go. See, I still make mistakes. make these mistakes as you can see i'm getting a bit excited here i need to go have my cup of coffee because when you make too many mistakes then it's time to take a break you see 
your brain gets overloaded. Now, I can guarantee you, if I came back in about 10 minutes, I played a lot better. I guarantee you, because I can play it quite well. I know I can. But I'm, you know, I'm overtaxing um, the system. Okay. Or I can go do something like G minor. I can see I've had enough because I'm making mistakes on things that I can actually do quite well. That's G minor pentatonic, three notes per string. position two to it. And you do it all Mistakes, but I'm also probably at a session to showing you very very practical tips here with things that I've struggled with and am struggling with but every morning generally I, I go through these routines just a little bit obviously not enough but for your benefit because for years you know I started playing guitar at the age of 14 and we didn't have technology like we have now you know we would be lucky uh, once a year to get a new musical express from the UK delivered to our news agency and I didn't have any money to buy the thing. It was like, you know, it was like seven dollars in our currency. I mean, you know, Keith, we used to get like twenty cents pocket money a, a week, you know. So older boys would uh, pass hand me downs, and then, and I got no formal training. So it was really difficult those days. So I want to share with you, thanks to YouTube and online um, performers uh, and guitar players that have freely given of their time. To enable people like me to pick up some ideas and tips and self-educate myself by using the internet. Like I, I'm certainly not the world's best guitarist, but I, but I actually can play. But I, I'm actually showing you my personal struggle to improve my shredding. And it's ironic that I find that a lot of shredders, once they actually get the technique, laugh about themselves a few years earlier because everything they wanted to do once was had to be 170 beats and more a minute up to 300 beats a minute you know and the rest and and, and a lot of these uh, global experts the world leaders in uh, let's say fusion and jazz music now actually laugh and make jokes about themselves how they used to rush things because once you got it you'll probably find you'll want to play slower and more meaningful but um it's not about showing off, I feel. It's, a, it's about developing your skills. And, and it's, it's always become like a life journey of mine to, um, to find the Holy Grail. Because I never knew what these guys were doing. I used to go like that as well when I was 16. You know, but I had no idea. I only found out my first scale, as you know, when I was like literally 56 years old. When I made a comeback. But... Um, in the last 10 years, I've spent um, up to 12,000 hours researching repertoire, watching all my favorite bands of the 60s and the 70s on YouTube, uh, researching repertoires, uh, chords, because learning songs to jam, that's repertoire. And then 
and then I, I played with a fellow who had a few lessons and he talked about minor pentatonic scale. I was horrified. I hadn't got a clue what he was talking about. Yet I'd played in several bands and was reasonably successful. I never realized I was actually doing it in my two finger format, but um, sometimes four finger format. But um, by the way, use all four fingers. That's why they were given to you. You can actually use your thumb as well with a thumb over. Jimi Hendrix song. Um, people say, oh, Jimi Hendrix, the late Jimi Hendrix had a huge hands. Well, I, I believe he did, but, but um, especially if you play a Stratocaster style guitar, the necks are quite thin and easy to get your, your thing. And that's for, you know, like... <laughs> start getting into three finger stuff you got thumb thumb behind so you keep your hand nice and loose and flexible <laughs> and you see i'm not making much sense here but i'm trying to keep my hand relaxed <laughs> when you come home from, from a hard day at work or from school just noodle a bit if you have to or just do some skate. Just do whatever you want to. Get yourself in a relaxed mood before you seriously sit down and try and do some training. Now I'll probably go have a cup of coffee now and then and I'll come back to it later. These um, shredder style licks, you don't want to do them all the time. You want to um, just do a sudden speed burst. Maybe you do, <laughs> but that's, that's, that's up to you to make the next generation of music. I grew up in a different era, but like I said in my other videos, and maybe I said it in this one, I'm tired of looking at these youngsters, and sometimes not so youngsters, who absolutely tear these fretboards up. Like, you know what I mean? And, and they, they just, I'm just trying to show you that you can also get the magic into your hands. A lot of these sort of things are based on licks of the late Alan Holdsworth that I've uh, tried to learn. But I'm pretty useless at them, and I know it sounds like garbage. But it's about getting your hand Does that make sense to you? I hope it does. at a flat five. So I'm coming out of D. That's the major third. So, so um, excuse me. That's the major third. Let's try it out of C. Flat five. 
or raised fourth. <laughs> And that's the fifth. Get used to those intervals. If you want to. But you can hear that sound, that's pretty special. says uh, do different things don't just keep playing just, I know this sounds like garbage but if you concentrate and use your ears and you listen to some Alan Holsworth music you, you know when I first heard it I was like what the and that was just a, what four years ago because I, I grew up under a rock like I told you so just you know that sound shocked the people in the middle ages eh? raise fourth but in blues music we call it the blues note and the octave of the flat five is that one so you've got g minor pentatonic as you know and the raised fourth or flat fifth Tone. Flat five, known as the devil's note in the Middle Ages. You would put on the burnt of the stake those days for playing like that. You can see I'm my ears leaning towards going for the flat notes. What I mean by flat, you got one, flat two, two, flat three, three, four. There is no flat four. You got raise four or flat five, five. Then you got flat six, six, flat seven, seven. Those are the intervals, all 12 of them. You have counted. Good luck with your shredding journey. <laughs> Just messing around this morning. Wish you a good day. It's um, seven more days to Christmas. And if you happen to have a break, I'll wish you a happy break, a peaceful break, a restful break, regardless of your goals and beliefs. I wish much peace and happiness upon you all. And I thank you for watching my channel, which is growing very nicely from six subscribers. I know you hate this part of the video from six subscribers to 518 this morning. And I'm very, very blessed. Christmas has come in advance for me. Um, you know, I close these videos off. If you happened to be at school, send the whole school to me. If you happen to own a business, send all the employers to me. If you work in an office, send the whole office block to me. You know, when you're in a lift with someone, tell them about Mike DeBrain 5538. <laughs> um,